Okay, hi, I'm Laura Adams. I teach physics at the University of Minnesota Duluth, and today I'm going to tell you about kinematics. So, what are we going to learn? We are going to learn the kinematic equations and how to use them. Particularly, we're going to learn how to use them in one dimension. So we're going to describe one dimensional motion. And then at the end, we're going to talk about how to analyze motion in two dimensions. So what are these famous kinematic equations? These kinematic equations are very useful only when the acceleration is constant. They describe the motion of a particle based on the particle's position or its velocity or its acceleration at a given instant in time, at any instant in time. And what's cool about the kinematic equations is it doesn't matter if you have a turtle, it doesn't matter if you have a puppy, it doesn't matter if you have a golf ball or a tennis ball or even a basketball. These kinematic equations don't care about the mass of your object, the shape of your object, what your object is composed of. They only care about that the acceleration is constant and that, that we can describe the motion of a particle. So they care about position, velocity, and time. So the first kinematic equation, there are three. The first one relates position with time. And we should define some quantities in this expression for this kinematic equation. So this subscript zero just means the initial position at t equals zero. So this is the position of an object at t equals zero. This subscript here is the speed of the object in the x direction also at t equals zero. So these values with these subscript just mean what's going on at t equals zero. This subscript here just means that the acceleration is in the x direction. So this is a position versus time equation, kinematic equation. This equation here is a velocity or speed versus time equation. And this equation describes the motion of a straight line. So if I was to plot velocity versus time, and the particle, the turtle, or what have you, started with some initial velocity in the x direction, then the slope of this line would be the acceleration. Okay, So that's a, an equation for a straight line. If you don't know time, time is not given in the problem, then this e last equation is very handy. This relates velocity with position. So this is a very handy equation if you don't know something about the time of the problem. So these are the three kinematic equations in the x direction. You can write similarly three equations in the y direction. All you have to do is replace the x's with y's. And so you can get another set of three kinematic equations that occur for constant acceleration in the y direction. Often we were in the y direction, the acceleration is due to gravity. So whenever an object is under the influence of gravity, we say that the acceleration is g. This is 9.8 meters per second squared. If we call downward positive, downward is positive, then this acceleration is plus 9.8 meters per second squared. Likewise, if we define downward to be negative, then g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, let's look at a one-dimensional example using these kinematic equations. Suppose I have a car, it's moving at constant acceleration. Okay, constant acceleration means I can use the kinematic equations. It's starting from rest. Okay, so we should draw a picture. So we have a car, it's here, it starts from rest. So our initial speed at t equals zero is zero. So this is our t equals zero. And our x, our initial displacement, our position is zero meters. Okay, 
it's going at constant acceleration. After a time t, the car has moved a distance d. So we can draw our car. This is going to be, it's going to have some speed. We don't know what that is. This is going to be a time. The final time is going to be t. And the distance that it's traveled is just d, some d meters. We want to know how long did it take, let's put this in red, how long did it take for the car to travel half the distance? Okay, so we're after time. Let's call it subscript half. How long did it take to go half the distance? So the distance is going to be d over 2. Okay, so we can use our kinematic equation, which relates position and time. So we have x is equal to x naught v naught x t plus 1 half a x t squared. The acceleration is constant. That's why we can use this kinematic equation through this whole trip. Okay, so this is what we want to find. We want to find the time it takes to go half the distance. So x is going to be d divided by 2. The initial position at t equals 0 is just 0. The initial speed is 0 at t equals 0. Plus, we have 1 half a. It's just the acceleration is constant. And we have t, we'll call it subscript 1 half squared. And so, what we get when we do the algebra, d divided by 2 is equal to 1 half a t 1 half uh, squared. So my 2's go away, and I get the time 1 half is equal to d over a. And so the time for half the trip is just the square root of d over a. So I look at the options I have here, and none of these options are available to me. So I'm going to have to find some more information. So we could use the second sentence in this problem to find the acceleration as a function of d. So we, we know that the time to take it, to take it, that it takes to go half the trip is d over a. But we're told that the total time that the car moves, it travels a distance d. So again, we can use this kinematic equation, x is equal to x naught v naught x t plus 1 half a x t squared. Okay, so to go a total distance d, again, it starts at x equals 0 meters, and it has 0 meters per second initial speed but it has the same acceleration and it goes at time t, okay? So we could get a is equal to 2d divided by t squared. I can plug this in to this equation here and get the time to go half the trip. So it's going to be d over a, but we know what a is now in terms of d. So that's 2d divided by t squared. So this d's cancel out, and we get t squared divided by 2, which is t divided by the square root of 2. So the answer here is t divided by the square root of 2. And it has the correct units. It has units of seconds, which is the units of time. All right, let's do another example. Let's do an example in the y motion, the y direction. So if I have a ball, let's just say it's like a tennis ball, and it's dropped from rest. So let's draw a picture. You have a ball. It's dropped from rest. That means the initial y of the speed is going to be zero meters per second, okay? And it's going to fall a distance d, so let's say this is some distance d and some time t. How far will the ball fall in 2t? So what is its y position after 2t? 
So I'm going to call this, let's, let's use a different color. Let's call this initially, let's say it's at zero uh, meters. Okay. And as it's falling, we're going to say that downward is positive. So what else do we know about this problem? We know that it's accelerating. It's accelerating because the tennis ball is under the influence of gravity. So gravity is pulling down on this tennis ball. So we're going to say that the acceleration is just positive g. Okay. So similarly to the last problem, we're going to find, use the kinematic equation that relates position with time. Okay, instead of looking for time, in this case, we're going to look for position. So we have y is equal to the initial uh, position plus the initial speed times t plus one half the acceleration in the y direction times t squared. Okay, the question is how far will the ball fall into t? So if our initial position is zero, our initial speed is zero, and our gravity is one half g t squared, but t is now two t, so we wanna put two t squared. And that gives us the final position. So the final position is equal to one half g four t squared, which is two t squared times g. Okay. So that's the answer, but wait a minute. I look over here and I don't have that as an option. So again, I need to use some more information in the problem. And the problem says that the ball falls a distance d and time t. So I can use this kinematic equation again, but just relate it to the information of the ball falling a distance d. There's my kinematic equation. Again, this is zero, this is zero, and the distance it falls is d, and it does that in a time t. Okay, so what can I do with this? So I can solve for g. g is equal to 2d divided by t squared. I can plug that into this equation, and then I can find y as a function of d. So Let's see here, so let's use a different color. So y is equal to two t squared times g, but g is constant, that's just two d divided by t squared. So we get four d. So the answer here is e, four d. So when we double the time, it quadruples the distance that the ball falls. Okay, let's practice with a more challenging problem. Say we have a 100 meter race and our competitors are the turtle. So the turtle's gonna race against the rabbit. This is not a rabbit, but you have to pretend this Dalmatian dog is a little bunny. Okay, and they're gonna start at the same point at the same time but how they get to the finish line is gonna be different, okay? So the rabbit first accelerates at a constant rate for one second, then runs at a constant speed for five seconds, and then rest, because the rabbit gets tired, and then repeats this cycle over and over. The turtle, on the other hand, accelerates at a constant rate of two meters per second for only three seconds, and then stops accelerating and just runs at a constant speed until it gets to 100 meters, okay? So who wins the race? How do we know who wins the race? Whoever finishes the race in the shortest amount of time. So we're looking for the shortest amount of time. So we wanna find the time it takes for the turtle and the rabbit to run 100 meters. The rabbit has a complicated journey. So the rabbit accelerates at this rate for only one second. And then it's gonna run at a constant speed. So the acceleration is gonna be zero for five seconds. Then it's gonna take a break and eat some carrots. And then it's gonna 
get some energy and it's going to again accelerate for one second at this speed. So what's really nice is if we plot the speed of the rabbit versus time. And we can figure out the total time that it takes for the rabbit to run this. So in the first case, it's going to accelerate for one second. So this is one second. And the rabbit and the turtle are starting from rest. This is how you start a 100 meter race. You both are standing there and you wait till the person says go. So they're going to start with an initial velocity in the x direction of zero. Okay, this is the speed at t equals zero. And then it's going to accelerate. So remember, when we accelerate, we have a straight line. And the slope of this line for velocity versus time is the acceleration. So the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. It's a constant slope, so the acceleration is constant. That occurs for one second, and then it's going to run at a constant speed. I'm going to erase this acceleration. Then it's going to run at a constant speed for five seconds. So that's going to be one second plus five seconds is going to be six seconds. Okay, and then it's going to take a rest for five seconds. So this leg of the journey, it's going to take a rest. It's rest, it's not moving at all, so the speed is zero. And now this is going to happen for five seconds, so we're at a total of 11 seconds. And then it's going to repeat. So then it's going to go again, it's going to accelerate, and then it's going to go at some continuous speed for five seconds. So this will be 12 seconds, and it accelerates one additional second. So we need to figure out, it has to go 100 meters, so we need to figure out how far did the rabbit go in the first leg of the race? So let's call this leg one, we'll call this leg two, and this is our leg three where nothing happens, it doesn't move, we'll call this leg four, and this is leg five. Okay, so the first half of the race, or leg one, how far does the rabbit go? So we're gonna use this kinematic equation, one half AXT squared. So initially it starts at the starting line, which is zero. It has initial speed of zero, it's starting from rest. And so it gets to a distance of one half. The acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. And it takes one second to go this distance. And so what you get here is five meters. So in one second, the rabbit travels five meters. Okay, then the second leg of our journey, of the rabbit's journey, we'll look over here, the second leg, it's gonna go at constant speed, so the acceleration is zero. So there's no acceleration, but how far does it go? So we can use this equation, v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. There's no acceleration, but what is the initial speed when it starts the second leg. So we have to figure that out. And we can figure that out by the first leg. So it's gonna start at some, the first leg, it starts off from rest, but then it's gonna have some final speed. What is that final speed? That's gonna be the initial speed for the second leg. So we can use the second kinematic equation to find the speed at this location after one second. And so initially it has zero meters per second. The acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. The time it takes that it accelerates uh, is the time it's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared is one second. And so that's the speed. And so that speed is just gonna be 10 meters per second. So on our graph, we can write 10 meters per second. That's the speed of this rabbit. And it's going to maintain that speed for five seconds. So we can figure out how far does it go. So x is equal to x naught. So now we're at five meters plus the speed 
10 meters per second, and we do this for five seconds. So we're going to run at constant speed for five seconds. And so when we calculate this, this is 55 meters. So at this location, we're at 55 meters. So we still have 45 meters. The rabbit still has 45 meters to go. But the rabbit gets tired. It does nothing for five seconds. So now the clock is at 11 seconds, and it repeats. So it goes from 11 seconds to 12 seconds. It travels another five meters. So now we're up to 60 meters, because 55 meters plus five meters is 60. And so now we have 40 meters to go. We saw before that we traveled 55 meters, but we don't want to go 55 meters. We only want to go 40 meters to get to the finish line, which is 100 meters. So we need to know how long does it take to get to this leg. So the fifth leg of our journey is just going to be x is equal to x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. In this fifth leg, the slope of this line is zero. That means the acceleration is zero. Okay, so we're moving at constant speed. The speed that we're moving at is 10 meters per second. Okay, and we are going to start at 60 meters. Our final distance is the finish line, which is 100 meters away. And our speed is going to be 10 meters per second. And we want to find how long does it take us to travel this distance. So we have 40 meters is equal to 10 meters per second times t. Therefore, t is equal to 40 meters divided by 10 meters per second. That's just four seconds. So it takes four seconds. So I add that to my 12 seconds, and I have 16 seconds. So the time it takes for the rabbit to run 100 meters is 16 seconds. That's the total time to do this chaotic running of stopping and accelerating and then moving at constant speed. OK, the turtle, what is, how does it run 100 meters? So the turtle is a little bit easier. So again, I'm going to plot the velocity of the turtle versus time. And so we see that the turtle accelerates at a constant rate for 2 meters per second squared for 3 seconds. So it's accelerating for 3 seconds. Okay. And then it runs at a continuous speed. Okay, and then it's going to have continuous speed. It's going to be a straight line. So how long does it take for this turtle to go 100 meters? So how long does it take it to go the first three seconds? So we could use our, let's call this leg one. It only has two legs in its uh, motion. So this is going to be x naught plus v naught x t plus one half a x t squared. So in the first three seconds, t equals three seconds. We're going to start at the starting position. We're going to start from rest because that's how you start a race. So we're going to go one half. Acceleration is two meters per second squared times three seconds squared. And so what we see is that the turtle gets nine meters, gets a distance of nine meters the first three seconds. Okay, so it has 91 meters to go. What is this speed that it's moving at? It's not accelerating because there's no slope. So the acceleration is zero on the second leg, but what is its speed? So again, we can use this kinematic equation for the first leg to find the speed here. And that's going to, this final speed is going to be constant uh, after three seconds for the turtle. So it starts off at rest. It has a speed of two meters per second squared that it, that it runs for three seconds before it stops accelerating. So this is six. When my seconds cancel out, I get six seconds 
So this is going to be 6 meters per second. That's the speed, and that's going to be the speed over these 91 meters that the, rat, that the turtle still has to go. So we can figure out what that time is using this kinematic equation. So this is for leg two. There is no acceleration. Okay, it starts off at nine meters. Its finish line is 100 meters. And the speed that it's traveling at is six meters per second times t. So I get 91 meters is equal to six meters per second times t. And so I get 91 meters divided by six meters per second is equal to tau. And 91 divided by six meters per second is t is equal to 15.2 seconds. Okay. So we're going to add 15.2 seconds to 3 seconds to get the total time. So the total time for the turtle is 3 seconds plus 15.2 seconds, which is 18.2 seconds. Okay, so who wins? Well, the rabbit competed 100 meters in 16 seconds, and the turtle did this in 18.2 seconds. So the rabbit's going to beat the turtle by 2.2 seconds. The rabbit wins the race. OK, let's use the kinematic equations now for something even more complicated, for motion that's in two dimensions. When you use kinematic equations in two dimensions, the main thing that you need to keep in the back of your mind is that the x motion and the y motion need to be independent of each other. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say we're serving a tennis ball. So you have, we have a tennis ball here and you're gonna hit it horizontally from a height of about two meters. Let's say you're really tall. So two meters is about six feet. So we're gonna give it some initial speed in the x direction. That's what it means horizontally. And the height of the ball is 2.0 meters, okay, above the ground. Okay, the ball must travel a distance d, which is 10 meters. And it must clear a net, okay, so let's say this is my 10 meters. And the net has a height of one meter, so about three feet. Okay, so we're only given the height of the ball. It has some initial velocity. And we're given the final height of the net. And we want to know, what does this initial speed have to be in order that you serve the ball so that it clears the net? So it's going to clear, we want it to clear this net. So what should this speed be? Okay, what else do we know about in this problem? We know that the, there's an acceleration due to gravity. So this tennis ball is under the influence of gravity. And let's say that we're going to call it downward minus in this case. So we'll say downward is negative. So we know the initial, the uh, acceleration due to gravity is constant. We also know that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. There's no acceleration in the x direction. So since we have more information about the y component, we know this is the initial height of the ball, and this is the final height of the ball that's just going to clear this net. So we can just use the kinematic equation for the y motion. So this is one half a y t squared. So the final height of the ball is one meter. The initial height of the ball we said was two meters. The initial speed, I forgot a t there, the initial speed of the 
ball in the y direction is zero. It's only moving initially in the x direction. So the initial y direction, the initial speed of in the y direction is zero. And we have gravity acting on it. There is an acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to say downward is negative. And so when I have one meter minus two meters divided, or this is equal to minus one half gt squared. Uh, sorry. So this is going to be minus one meter is equal to minus one half gt squared. And I can multiply both sides by a negative. And so I get two times one meter divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, and I get t squared. And I can take the square root of this of both sides. And when I do, I get t is equal to 0 0.452 seconds. Okay, so that's the time it takes for the ball to go from this height to this height. It's just going to clear the net. Okay, but what the question asks is what is this initial speed? So then I need to look at the kinematic equation for the x direction. Okay, that's our kinematic equation for the x direction. We know that there's no acceleration in the x direction. It's going to start off at x equals 0. And it travels a distance d in the horizontal direction of 10 meters. So this is 10 meters is equal to v naught x times t. This time that it takes to reach the net is going to be the same time that it's going to travel in the horizontal direction. So we can relate the time in the y motion to it's going to be the same time in the x motion. OK, so we can find the initial speed. It's going to be 10 meters divided by this time, 0 0.452 seconds. And when I do this, I get 22.12 meters per second. That's the speed that you need to hit that ball in order for it to clear that net. If you hit it at a slower speed, it's not going to clear the net. Okay, That's the minimum speed you need. So what should we take away with these examples? So the takeaway message is that the x and y kinematic equations are independent of each other. In the case of free fall, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If down is negative, if down is positive, then you're going to use plus 9.8 meters per second squared. In free fall, the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. So that velocity that we just calculated is going to be the same velocity at, that we serve it with. It's also going to be the velocity in the x direction at the net. Uh, we use kinematic equations only when the acceleration is constant. And we don't have to worry about the mass of the object. And we use them to answer questions like, what is the total horizontal distance an object travels? How long does it take for an object to reach its final destination? What is the speed of an object when it reaches its final destination? What is the maximum height that an object can, can rise? How long does it take for an object to reach its maximum height or the time it takes it to reach the ground? So these are some of the, the questions that you can answer using these powerful equations. So thank you for your attention and good luck with kinematics.